Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. This is a quick notice to let you know that this is a re-upload. This is something that was on my channel but had to be taken down when I became a partner because it had a copyright music track in it. In this case, it was actually Ed Guy with Rocket Ride. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to have those kind of things up on the channel when you get to the size that this channel now is, and I never got around to re-uploading it. I keep getting requests to re-upload it, so I'm finally now getting the time to do so. So... If you've already seen this again, my apologies, but those who haven't, this is a tour of Ashara. Enjoy. Ah, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Cataclysm video. My name is Total Biscuit from the WoW podcast Blue Please, and your word for the day is productivity. What we're hoping to see in terms of my video production today, as well as the Zone of Ashara, where strip mining and all manner of crazy things are going on. This is a massive change to the zone. Huge, huge alterations have been made across the board. I want to show you that, and I also want to show you the effect of the Goblin Rocket Way. Yes, you'll see that momentarily. I'm not going to show you what you can do on it until the end of the video. Also, it's a little surprise at the end for those of you who have been with WoW for a very long time. You'll recognize this particular character. So it seems that the goblins have built a highway of sorts across Ashara, perhaps to replace the one that they blew up in Kezen. To my knowledge, at least from what I saw, there are no cars to go across this, but you can use rockets. I'm not going to use that for the time being, because I want to show you the zone from the air, and then we can look into getting one of those sweet rockets to ride across the zone in style and incredible danger. There's an awful lot of this roadway, way more than you saw in Kezen, and of course it is a huge zone, so shouldn't surprise you all that much. I think a lot of people may object to the industrialization of this zone, which was fairly nice looking, although a little dull. You certainly couldn't accuse it of being dull now, I can tell you that for a fact. There it is, and if you turn your head to the left, you will notice that the entire island is now a horde symbol. Yes, indeed. Some crazy stuff in here as well. The first thing I'd like to show you is the secret laboratory. And if this isn't owned by a goblin scientist called Dexter, I'm going to be so very disappointed. It appears to have a nuclear missile silo. Makes perfect sense. Mind-controlled raptors. As well as various science interns who are running around on fire. Makes perfect sense. Now, the level range for this zone, as far as I can tell, is around 14 to 20 or so, give or take. I've yet to do the Lost Isles, that will come up in a future video, but I would imagine there's some kind of connection between Ashara and the Lost Isles, because I'm seeing a massive number of low-level goblins in this zone. I would think that perhaps this port over here may give access... And you will notice a character that I showed you in the goblin starting zone has taken up residence here. As you can see, a lot of mobs cleared out in the name and the way of progress. This is a goblin port by the name of Bilgewater, which is a berth for some of the Horde Navy. One of the most major goblin town I've seen thus far, honestly, in terms of size and militarization. A lot of crazy stuff going on here. More advanced than the previous goblin towns you've seen. A lot more technology. A lot of steampunk stuff going on here, which, hey, that's kind of part of the Warcraft universe has been since the original game. Warlord Krog hanging around there. And that appears to be a giant bomb in the corner there. Now, some of the textures here are a little bit bugged, so apologies for that. See? There's that hat again. I want that hat. If anyone from Blizzard is watching this, please tell me where I can get that hat. Now, this you will find intriguing, and perhaps a little bit worrying if you happen to be part of the wrong faction, i.e. the Alliance, because it seems we have a railgun of some description. Either that, or it's a very threatening-looking telescope. It appears to be some kind of giant cannon that, I am informed, is aimed in the direction of Stormwind. Yes, indeed, we are on a war footing here, ladies and gents. No doubt about that. Okay, let's move on out and see what else we can find. It's 
such a better zone than it used to be. There's really no doubt about that. Ashara was, in my opinion, one of the most dull places. I barely went there. I did maybe a level's worth of questing. It was massive. It took ages to get across. It was mostly empty nonsense. But now look at it. I believe this place was here before, but we're going to have a look at it from the air anyway. This is where the Naga hang out around this broken statue. We're going to speed things up a little bit here. There's a lot of ground to cover in this massive zone. Indeed, I would argue that flying in this zone is probably a bad idea. Using the rocket way is, I would imagine, a more efficient way to get from location to location. And you might wonder how to do that, and I will demonstrate it for you. The rocket way is like an alternative to flying. Flight paths do exist in this area, but the rocket way takes you directly to certain locations that might be useful, and it's free, which is nice for low levels who may not have all that much cash to throw around in terms of using a wind rider. Of course, one of the best things is you don't have to find the points that you were supposed to go to in order to actually get a flight there. You don't have to pick up a flight path when you use the rocket way. Right, I'm going to take you to have a look at something very interesting indeed. This is the uh, pleasure home of uh, someone that you met back in the Goblin Starting Zone. He helped you off the island, if you remember. Seems he's taken up residence here and he's doing fairly well for himself. He's built himself what appears to be Mount Goblin Moor. I do like the hat, though. I'll give him that. It's good stuff. He has taste. That's not the only thing surprising here. Something that would be out of character for any other race. But not so much for this guy. Let's head over to the top of this area and I'll show you what I mean. Amongst the construction lies a golf course. Yes, indeed. Goblin Golf. That most popular of pastimes amongst the upper class of this particular race. And he brought a swimming pool. This one's a lot cleaner than the last one. Oh, and he brought a red, that retarded horse. Fantastic. Some stylish stuff right here. All I can hope is that we get to blow it up. That would be nice. You can pretty clearly see that this is a horde-dominated area. There are a few smaller alliance areas you see over there. And there is a little bit of a base camp, but this is designed as a horde starting zone. Alliance presence is minimal at best. Now again, here's some more just generic touring around. There's not an awful lot to show here, but it's nice to see all of this from the air. A few smaller camps of NPC Alliance. Once again, demonstrating just how far the rocket way really goes. Now, those towers, you can see those on the map, so they're fairly handy for finding out where you need to go, and each represents an area you can get off at. And that apparently is the Darnassus base camp, consisting of three tents, probably why they don't have much of a military presence here. It even goes all the way across the water. Now, I don't remember this. Someone could correct me if I'm wrong, but this is an area now populated by the Black Dragonfly. You can see a number of bones, and I might be wrong here, but some of those bones with the ice near them look an awful lot like they could potentially be Azurgus. But I don't know. Azurgus is not in this zone. He might be dead. Then again, it never seemed to stop him before. Whatever the case, is interesting to see anyway, and I've got to wonder what the Sable Ridge has in store and why the Black Dragon Flight are even here. Okay, this almost concludes this part of the video. After this, we're going to take a ride on the rocket, and I will show you where it goes and how it works. It's pretty neat. And then last but by no means least, we'll have a cameo from a fairly famous character back from the mists of WoW history. So an overall assessment of this zone, you can see massive industrialization. Horde really going for the whole slash and burn style of resource exploitation. I think that's going to be a flashpoint perhaps for war on various fronts. Are you ready for a quick ride on the Goblin Rocketway? Oh yes. 
Enjoy. That's awesome. I'm sorry, it is. There's one more thing I'd like to show you. Hmm, who is this swarthy fellow dancing a merry jig? Some kind of pirate captain? In this place? Can I help you? Captain Placeholder, the level 95 pirate. Oh, there's some nostalgia for you. If you remember him, well, you can be regarded as one of the veterans. My name's been Total Biscuit. This has been